Sue here from Our Journey in Miles, and in this video, we're going to review the Garmin RV 1095 GPS Navigator. It's really nice, extra large, 10 inch screen. We're going to give you all the pros, and let me tell you, we have a lot of pros. We love this thing. And there's actually, I think, two cons that we found. One was, eh, and the other one was, we kind of figured out. You know, it was kind of user problem, not as user friendly. But anyways, we'll get to that. There are a lot of pros. So I probably should take this time to mention to you that Garmin did provide this uh, RV, Garmin RV 1095 free to us for us to review. And we're going to give you our honest opinion. Everything we've said is honest, all the pros and the cons, and you definitely need to play with it to um, really understand it and find the little things that you like. But this has been provided to us, and this is our honest review. So let's get to the review. Are you ready? So we've got both of these garments sitting like this so we can uh, compare them as we're going along. When we bought our used Dutch Star, it's a, a 2014. Um, it came with the Rand McNally navigator on the dash. We never used it. We didn't like it. So right away, Mark went and got the this Garmin. I'll put what it is right down here. Um, one thing we really liked was that it came on a bean bag. So we could just set it here. We didn't have to drill into the um, the dashboard at all didn't have to mount it on the the mirror plus it was nice for when we were um, on the road there were times that I would actually grab it put it on my lap in the passenger seat and kind of find things change things um, I could do some adjustment and then just put it back here another reason why we like it on the beanbag friction mount is because it's portable we actually drive into a 2013 Honda Odyssey and it never came with a navigator. So the nice thing is when we are out touring, out and about, is we could bring it into our uh, minivan and just put it right here. And uh, we had our navigator, something we didn't have on the, uh, this older Honda Odyssey. Now that we have a bigger Garmin, this baby's going to stay in here. But not right now because... I want to see them work side by side in the rig. So we had mentioned once before that we've got these positioned in a goofy spot so that we can talk about them on camera. But when I first set it up on the dashboard here, obviously it is quite a bit bigger. And I think if you have a pickup truck, this thing would be pretty big and you're going to want to get it in a good spot but we've got so much room to work with even at that when I put this here it seemed a little bit big but having used it now only two days I'm totally good with that and we might actually end up uh, getting to I don't want to touch it now because I want to make sure I know how to get the screen back but if I would ever for instance need uh, better visibility all of a sudden I would just reach and turn this thing sideways and now it becomes a little pencil thin and I can go, okay, yeah, I, I'm done with that, what I got there, you know. Yeah. And that brings up a point, show the friction mount, honey. Yeah. We've, we've really liked the small friction mount because we can take it back and forth in between vehicles and just plunk it on the dashboard. Okay, at this point, I do want to mention that, you know, our big one is on the friction mount, but it is so easy to come off. It's just uh, magnetic. The other one is like a ball and socket, so it's a little bit harder. So it goes on, it comes off really easy if I need to hold it in my hand. Bam. Now, we have zero problems of it moving around. When the 10-inch first came out, it did not have a friction mount option. And I had to wait for them to come up with the XL mount. But the minute they came out with it, I was on board to get it. Uh, we might want to mention that you'll notice that we have a carpet on our dash. If we did not have the carpet, it would be sliding all around. The carpet is made by Shade Pro, and it comes only in a few different colors, but for our Dutch Star and the year that we have, it matches perfect, and it fits perfect. We love it. 
So let's get started. I want to start first by showing you how to set up the, the Garmin for your vehicle and what you're towing. And then I'm going to take you through some of the main screens and the, the main things and through some features that we really like. There are so many features with this Garmin. There's no way I'm going to show you all of it. But uh, that brings me to a point to really figure out how to use this Garmin. You got to play with it just like any technology, like when you get a phone, new phone and stuff like that. So you definitely want to play with it like I've been doing. So um, we're going to start by turning it on and it turns on on the side and in the back you're going to find a volume plus and minus. You can adjust what, when you finally have it talking to you. First screen you're going to see is this warning and it talks about not um, adjusting while you're driving and also keep your eye on the road. Good advice. So then we come to this main page and you can see up in the right hand corner um, we've got a, a motorhome pulling a trailer. Basically it's going to be pulling our, our minivan. So we've got our vehicle profile set up and let's start with that because you want to make sure it's ready for you. If you go in the lower right corner, you're going to hit the settings button and here you'll see where you can do updates and here's our vehicle profile. So right now we've got the rig towing our Honda. We customize, put Honda in there. And when you go there, you can see you have choices of motor, home, car, and rig towing Honda. We already have it all adjusted to our motor home length, the overall length, and uh, the width, the height, and the weight. So when you start out, you can go to the plus and decide what are you driving. Are you in just a motor home, motor home and trailer? If you're pulling a trailer, what kind of trailer? A travel trailer, boat trailer, regular trailer? It also down here, if you've got a vehicle pulling a trailer, what kind of trailer is it? Fifth wheel, a boat? So this is pretty nice. You can truly customize to what you're pulling. I'm going to go back and I already chose the uh, motorhome with the trailer. So to adjust that we go down here to the wrench and here you can see you can put your height in, you can do your width, the overall length, the gross weight, maximum speed. We have ours at 60, that's kind of what we average, we're slow. And then for the trailer which actually is our Honda minivan, we put in the dimensions for that too and the weight. If you go up here in this um, menu, the three lines or the hamburger, you can see you can rename your profile or you can delete it if you uh, don't want that in here anymore. All right, we're going to go back. We're all set up. Um, and there's also the car. So let's go back here. We're good. We're going to select that. Up in the corner, it confirms, yes, we are in the uh, motorhome pulling a trailer. Gosh, I just noticed you set this up so we're looking like a motorhome. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Not just some generic little arrow. Yeah. Nice. One thing that I really like about this is when you are navigating, you can set up your um, vehicle to look like the vehicle. So if you go into map display, it actually shows the map vehicle icon. So right now we're set up as uh, our motorhome when we're in motorhome vehicle profile. And you can see you can go with the simple arrows or if you have a truck, or if you're pulling a, a trailer, a fifth wheel, a van. Um, it does have a car in here. So there's many choices. One thing that happened was when we took this into the car and I plugged in where we're going to in our car, um, I was seeing the motorhome icon and I thought, oh no, I forgot to put it in, in car uh, profile, which would have meant that we might have gone around the long way to get somewhere rather than taking a shorter car route. So what you can do with that, let's go back to vehicle profile and let's say we're going to go in car now. So this is when you want to set up your little um, icon. So we're going to do the car. You can see we've got the car up here. And now you're going to go into the map display and the vehicle icon. Here's when I chose to go with our minivan. So I chose that one for when we are in the car uh, vehicle profile. So it, I'm a visual person. If I'm in the car, I want to see a car on the road, not a red arrow. 
Um, when I'm in the motorhome, I want to see the motorhome. So I know I'm in the right profile for uh, when we're driving. So here's my first criticism in my review on the Garmin. Uh, that motorhome only has two air conditioners on the roof and we have three. Oh God, you want it custom. Which result would you like? Oh. <laughs> well, we'll talk to you later about that. So since we're setting up, let's just go all the way through. In the navigation, we have in the avoidance, we want to avoid the U-turns, the ferries, carpool lanes, unpaved roads. Okay. You can do custom avoidance, environmental zone, restricted. This is uh, kind of cool too, the voice language. So you can choose American, Spanish, French. There's a, a lot of different voices in here. We actually chose to go with Zoe rather than Michelle. And there's a reason for that. Zoe actually speaks Garmin real directions. Now the difference is in Michelle, she'll say something like 500 feet ahead, turn right on Green Street like okay now you're looking for signs okay is that it you know sometimes those streets are close um, whereas speak Garmin real directions Zoe will see be in the two right lanes and take a right at the traffic light on Green Street so basically you're looking at the lanes anyways you're looking at the traffic light so you don't have to take your eyes off to start reading signs that might be pretty hard to read so we really like the um, Speaks Garmin Real Directions, telling us what lane to be in and where to turn at the traffic light and the street. So we chose Zoe. To be in any of the three left lanes. I love that. This is always a nice feature as you're coming up with all these lanes. It's like, which lane should we be in for uh, our exit coming up in 1.2 miles? So we can see that we are in a good lane. Now to get back to our uh, first screen, the main screen, if you press this uh, center dot, that'll get you there every, every time. All right, let's go through this, where to. Now you can go up in the search uh, area and just type in your address or where you wanna go. A lot of times if it is a popular place, it'll just show up. For example, if we went to search and we typed in Margaritaville, Auburndale and then we searched for it it'll show up you can see we've got it right there let's go back um, here again it's just typing in the address and if you've got places that you go to a lot like Cypress Trail we've got Wisconsin State Fair we've got them they're in our uh, saved areas easy to find and also, if you're like going to Walmart and then you're coming back to your RV resort, then you're going to a theater and coming back to resort and, you know, to the beach, whatever, um, you can go to recent. And instead of plugging in, you can go, oh, yeah, I want to go back to Cypress Trail. So that's kind of fast and easy too. checking into the, the recent. So another really, really cool thing that I like is that this has a uh, voice activation. So you don't have to type out everything. So all I need to do is say, okay, Garmin, go to Camp Margaritaville, Auburndale. Going to Camp Margaritaville, Auburndale on Denton Avenue in Auburndale, Florida. And there it is. How fast and easy was that rather than typing it in? I love that feature. All right, we're going back. But another cool one is the categories. So for the fuel stations, it's going to actually show you all the different fuel stops that are on your route to where you're going, which is really nice also. Another thing is rest areas. Plan ahead. You can see all the rest areas that are going to be on your route also. And then restaurants. And you can actually browse according to what you're looking for, whether it be breakfast or coffee and tea or fast food, um, pizza. I mean, the category stuff's pretty cool. And then you can see a, a whole list of other categories, shopping, art and entertainment, metal care, medical care. Man, that's really important to know, too, when you're on the road. So that's our where to. And here we've got the map, so we can always get back to the map. 
Right, let's look at some of these apps that are on the right side right away. The campgrounds is pretty nice. If you're traveling along and uh, you've decided I've had enough driving and we didn't book anything, if you hit the campground, you can see what's in the area. And the more you scroll down, the more it actually pulls out. So you can see all the different um, choices that you have. And you can even go further up. You know, instead of scrolling down, you can go further up and then search here. Kind of figure, okay, I want to be, be around Port Charlotte. All right, many choices there. Let's go back. And then this is kind of cool too, the trendy places. So we are in Fort Myers right now, and it's showing you all the trendy places you might want to check out while you're here. Uh, Manatee Park's awesome. We did it. We did the Eco River Tour. Um, Flea Master uh, Flea Market is fun. Hog Bodies Bar and Grill, really good ribs there. And you can see all the different things in the area that you might want to try. And they all kind of populate and are numbered so you can find out just where they're located. So really like that trendy place too. The apps actually will give you more choices. Right now we're in navigation. You know, there's a pilot one, um, traffic, trendy places weather. We're going to get back to weather in a bit. Um, there's also tools here if you want to do something with your camera that's on the Garmin. Um, there's also the clock right here. I'm going to push this uh, back arrow to get back to it. Music, settings, owner's manual, a lot of different choices here. And that's in the tool section. Okay, we're going to go back to that main uh, menu again and I'm going to hit the center dot there we go. All right, let's go back to the Garmin Drive app. That's another thing you really want to download before you start setting off on your trip. Um, with the Garmin Drive, you can actually get real-time information on traffic. That's one thing I liked about Google, but I didn't have on my other Garmin. So now I can see if there's a delay or if there's a detour coming up. It's real-time. You also can see um, weather. Uh, traffic cameras. I'm not set up for that, but that's kind of cool. It also allows for, if you're set up, to see what calls are coming in or texts are coming in or even emails are setting up. Sometimes it can be a little distracting, but uh, it's kind of a nice feature too. You can turn off that. You can turn off the, the calls and email notification if you don't like that. But the um, real-time information on traffic, I absolutely love. You can see too, they do show if there's a delay up there. So somewhere, live traffic, there is a 10-minute delay. That's one thing that I wasn't crazy about on the old Garmin. So I did rely on Google a lot just to tell me what is the live traffic like. So this live traffic delay popped up again, four minute delay, um, 2.1 miles remaining, which is interesting. So we know after two miles, they're going to be speeding up. That is a nice feature. Nice. Right now we're back to two minute delay and we've got about a mile before we uh, clear that out. Traffic is moving faster and you can see Google is actually saying, yep, you're in the orange. And now we're in the clear. Really do love this live traffic. And I love the weather and the radar so we can see what's going on right now. Back on the main um, menu, remember that dot in the middle will get you here. And then uh, currently we are in Fort Myers. But if you go up in the corner where the, the menu is or the hamburger, three lines, you can go to weather radar. This one I really like. So you can see what's going on in, in the area and where you're traveling to in case you're running into some bad weather. And you can see here in sunny Florida, not much happening. But if I zoom out, you can see if we're heading towards New Orleans, they've got a lot of rain happening in that area. So I really like the weather radar too. All right, let's go to the view map now, and uh, we'll go around that to show all the different things you can see on that view. First of all, let's get set up to go somewhere. Okay, Garmin, go to Margaritaville, Auburndale. All right, we want Camp Margaritaville, and we will go. Going to Camp Margaritaville, Auburndale on Denton Avenue in Auburndale, Florida. 
Let it root. So you can see right away, it shows that we are in the correct vehicle mode. It'll take us two hours, 25 minutes, and the roads that we will be on. It also shows a satellite view, which I really like, of once we get there. This is Margaritaville, and it shows you how you're going to come in. You can kind of see what the roads look like and all the turns you're going to have to make. So if we don't want to look at that, you can always look on the right where there's an X. That means you just uh, close it out. Here's a shot of the screen from when we were leaving Georgia going into Florida. On the lower left corner is our speedometer showing how fast we're going. And right by it is the posted speed limit, 70. We all know how some highways, that speed limit can change often. In the upper left corner, you'll see that in 21 miles, we'll be making a right turn onto exit 177, which is Interstate 475 going south. Next to the speedometer on the bottom, Garmin tells you that that turn that we're just looking at is going to happen in 17 minutes and 56 seconds. How's that for being accurate? Lower right, you see how many miles to our destination and the arrival time. Along the right are map tool shortcuts. The top one shows the remaining route without having to zoom out. And all you need to do is just exit and it'll take you right out of there. Then this one shows what's up ahead like fuel, camping, trendy places, and restroom stops. This is the plan arrival with a satellite view of your destination. And whenever you see these three lines, you want to explore it. This is the menu button, and that will give you more information. And in this case, because we're on the map view screen, it will show more tools with information about your route and surroundings. We found the screen to be really organized and really easy to read. So I think I just found the first thing I'm falling in love with this on this thing. But I just asked Sue, I said, hey, do I have to set up for a turn real soon? Well, this thing tells me in 34 minutes is my next turn. So I could take a nap for 32 minutes here, you know? I like that. I think one of the things Mark really likes is that it actually shows us what speed we're doing right now. Traffic's slow. We're just getting going. Um, 18 miles per hour. So that's our speedometer. And then it also shows you what the speed limit is. So it's pretty clear, it's pretty obvious. You're not hunting on the dashboard for the dial, which we have a dial, not a digital. On our previous one, I became dependent on the speed limit, speed, uh, because I like that I can see what the speed is I'm going, but I can see what the current speed limit is. I mean, there is tons of time. I don't have a clue what the speed limit is yeah. because the signs are too far apart. Uh, so I got to the point where I don't even use my speedometer anymore and every once in a while when we had the Garmin in the wrong vehicle and I didn't have the ability to see what the speed limit was and what speed I was going, I was, you know, kind of uh, at a disadvantage. So something we uh, just discovered on uh, the new one. It shows you the speed limit that you're in right now. And the cool thing that's happening is if it's going to change, it doesn't all of a sudden change. It actually turns yellow and it tells you the speed limit coming up ahead. There it is, 50 ahead. And sure enough, there it is. So if you're going a little too fast when it changes, Garmin actually talks to you. And this didn't happen too often for us because we're slow, but there was once when we were going faster than the speed limit coming up that was going to be lowered, and it did tell us to slow down. So you can see we should arrive by 2 p.m., but it'll be later than that because we'll make a couple stops, fuel, and uh, a bathroom break. Are you saying I drive slow? Yeah. Oh. But that is nice. It actually gives you arrival time. And it's also correct according to the zone. So if you're crossing a time zone, it'll give you the time of whatever zone you're going to be in when you get there. So we have kind of an impromptu trip where we're going from Cypress Trail to uh, Tampa. So it's about a two and a half hour trek and we thought we would test out the Garmin RV 
1095 in the Honda and I fully expected it to be too big just like one of the other reviews that we saw that complained about it was too big on our 2013 Honda Odyssey we do not have a nav system but we have this big pretend screen in there that really doesn't tell you anything so we took our friction mount and the beautiful thing about the friction mount is it has an extra degree of freedom in there the arm itself can articulate all the way down and that was the key that helps it fit perfectly on our RV well wouldn't you know it we put it in the Honda and I articulate it down as well and I have virtually no obstructed vision this way looking over my right front fender and we have the added advantage of this really really good view here and uh, all the information that's displayed on here big enough for these old eyes to see it so we really like this in the Honda and who knows maybe I'm gonna have to pop for another one just in here because here's our little tiny one we're using it just to make <laughs> just to make sure that uh, you know one or the other picks up something the other one doesn't but uh, you know bigger is better so here we have the time and when we're gonna turn the miles to our destination and the arrival time how fast we're going speed limit 10 miles returning, Gasparilla Road in 17 minutes. And at this point, I want to talk about the two cons that we have. One is, this is expensive. This Garmin was not cheap. You know, it's got so much going on, so much technology. It's like, you know, I'm not sure how you would set the price. But it is not cheap, so that's one of the cons. The second con is the um, voice activation you've got to be really accurate on how you ask things otherwise it doesn't know what you want so don't get me wrong I love this voice activation I really do and once we kind of figured out where our problems were or my problems were I can ask it more accurately and I love it hands-free look what happened when I was trying to find the loves in route and now that we have our uh, route all in Let's see if we can find some fuel. I know there's no TA along the way. That's our favorite because uh, we generally get the better price when we're using our open roads um, diesel fuel discount card. So I know also close to where we're going to be, there is a Loves. So, okay, Garmin, find Loves truck stop in route. Which result near Root Road would you like? All right, you can see sometimes it gets a little confusing. Let's try it again. Too many choices there. Okay, Garmin, find Love's truck stop on route. So the difference is I said on route, not in route. I found the result. And they did. That one word made a big difference. You got to say on the route, not in. Okay, Garmin, find Cypress Trails RV Resort. And sometimes it could be just one letter that throws you off. Okay, Garmin. Find Cypress Trail RV Resort. I found the result. And it's as simple as that, as long as you know how to say it right. So needless to say, we really love this Garmin. It's the um, Garmin RV 1095, 10-inch 10 screen. That's the big thing. We love that we can easily see it, easily read it, and like all the features. I especially like that live traffic. That's something different. Oh, there's so many other things I like about it. Um, we like it so much that Mark is actually thinking of possibly getting another one of these and putting it into our um, minivan and just retire our smaller one. So if you're thinking you might want one of these too, we'd really appreciate your support. Just go to our website, ourjourneyinmiles.com, and up in the upper menu, you'll see that we have an Amazon store. We'll get a small percentage of what you spend, but it won't cost you anything more. So once you get to the Amazon store, you're going to see our face right there. 
and make sure you start with your cart being emptied. And I should say, every time you do shop through our Amazon store, you do need to go through our website link. You cannot just um, bookmark this page. And if you scroll down, you'll see that Mark has it really well organized by category. And you'll find the Driver's Cab Electronics. It's in here that you're going to find the garment that we bought. I should also mention that you can go through our Amazon store and our website and buy anything. It does not have to be just RV things that we have here. You might buy baby diapers or maybe gardening tools. You can buy anything through our uh, website. We really appreciate your support. And when you click on that category, you're going to see our Garmin is right there. And right underneath it is the friction mount that we have for the extra large. Got to have that extra large if you're going to get that 10 inch screen. And once again, Mark and I really do appreciate your support for our channel by using our Amazon store. So anyways, thank you for being with us and sticking through this this far. And Mark and I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. The YouTube algorithms recognizes the relevance of YouTube channels only when folks actually subscribe to them. It's free and is especially good with a cup of coffee in the morning. So until we get to meet you on the road or in a campground someday, we invite you to join us most Sunday mornings for another episode of Our Journey in Miles. Okay, Garmin. Walgreens near me. Which result would you like? Going to Walgreens on 12041 Palm Beach Boulevard in Fort Myers, Florida. This is so easy. Wow. Safe travels.